Holy sh**, it's Destiny 2. Now, if you're a regular on my channel, then you know that I'm a fan of this franchise and have been since September 9th, 2014, the day one for the first Destiny. As you can imagine, I was super excited when Destiny 2 came out, despite it being in the midst of my senior year in college. You know, right when I didn't have time for it. But I didn't let the terrible release date sway me from re-establishing the dim light, and me and my friends played through the game with a new spark of hope for Bungie's latest franchise. So, first things first, the sequel syndrome of just copy and pasting the elements of the first game into the second one. For Destiny, most people thought that was exactly what Destiny 2 was going to be. And for the most part, it was. But this was the right choice for the game. The developers took the parts of the first game that we loved, the looting, the raids, the strikes, the customizable swag, and improved on most aspects of it. Looting was still fun and addicting at first. The new raid had so much new bull to offer without being a completely glitchy pain in the ass. The strikes were longer and more challenging, and they played around with the Nightfall formula a bit. And now we have emotes and individually customizable armor. The downside to all of this is the same with the first game. It gets repetitive. You can only murder the same handful of aliens so many times before you need something new, but because Destiny is essentially an MMORPG and looting gear is the main point of the game, you need to be able to replay the missions. Now, they did try to do something neat with this principle, and changed up enemy types and patterns during strikes. This, however, was just not enough to actually change the experience. It was a nice gesture, though. A better gesture would have been giving us a new energy type and a new alien race to match it, which has been a good part of the speculation around the next expansion. Now, before really laying into the flaws of the game, and it does have flaws, let's talk about the two best fixes to the game. Number one, the, the crucible. crucible. Now, this is actually a divisive amongst a lot of players, but me and many other players didn't care for the Crucible in Destiny 1, as it just felt like it was trying to copy all the other multiplayer-based games that were out at the time. The sequel did the same thing, but with enough improvements to make it fun. Supers are now much less common, but if you do want to have supers constantly flying around and have that sort of explosive gameplay, they have Mayhem Mode. Shotguns are heavy weapons. <laughs> Sorry, I mean power weapon. You know what? No. Fuck you. It's purple. It's heavy. Point is, now you can't rely on them the entire game. Same with snipers. Now they are very much a skill weapon, which is why you don't see anyone running around with them. So, score one bungee. There are no quick scopers here. And most importantly of all, Titans are balanced. If you played Destiny 1, you know what I'm talking about. The melee attacks. Titan melee was so OP in Destiny 1 because of the one-hit KO known as the shoulder charge. Sure, the supers had gotten even more stupid for them, but warlocks can just fly over them and hunters can just shut them down. Overall, the classes are much more balanced on all sides, which makes it more fun. Pulse grenades are still total BS, but they keep the Titan and Warlock art classes usable. And finally, the most important improvement, the story. Destiny 1 had a plot, kind of? It was simple, protect the light from the dark. The light being our giant ball friend, the Traveler, and the dark being all the pitiful aliens that we mow down. The problem is, we have no stake in the fight. Our character was dead for a few centuries before the game begins, and nobody in the game seems interested in explaining why we are the hero that the light needed. There is nothing interesting about our character, which leaves us kind of disconnected to the whole story. Plus, there are a bunch of unresolved plot threads. <coughs> the stranger! <coughs> mm, sorry. And the big bad ends up being a bunch of easily destroyed robots guarding a big black goopy heart thing. And they're not even really where the game ends, so the story ends and then we gotta go fight more robots? The f***? Cut to Destiny 2. And enter... Gaul. 
This guy shows up, bombs our house, puts our giant ball friend in a Pokeball, kicks us in the balls, and leaves us for dead. Now that is a villain. That is a character you want dead, and that is proper motivation for the story. Along the way, we actually meet some side characters with personality, and we learn the more compelling nature of our enemy, and his quest to become a guardian of the light. This is a story done right. Our character is immediately part of the story, and is directly involved in Gaul's takeover, which gives us, the player, a purpose. Aside from, you know, non-stop looting. Now, where went wrong? Starting with Gaul. He goes out like a total bitch. The boss battle is too f***ing easy, because at this point you have badass enough gear and you get an infinite supply of supers to wail on them. This is a running trend through the first two DLCs. Super awesome enemy that you can't wait to fight, completely f***ing neutered by gimmicky bullshit. I think Bungie would have learned from the company that took over their previous beloved franchise that an underwhelming boss fight is the fastest way to ruin a game. How this could have been fixed is really simple actually. After you slaughter Gaul, we get a cutscene of him going Super Saiyan Cabal, and again something awesome is ruined, this time by a literal deus ex machina. The Traveler wakes up and farts in Gaul's general direction, game over. That was lame. To fix this, all they had to do was let us fight Gaul in his normal form, with normal combat, have us struggle a little bit, and then have us fight him while we're infinitely super, while he is giant Super Saiyan Gold Gaul. An epic God of War style boss fight is exactly how this needed to end, but Bungie f***ed it, and f***ed it hard. Aside from the underwhelming finish of this game, there are are a few errors left that I need to point out, one being that most of the exotics are kind of boring, and there was no exotic sword, which was kind of a letdown. The sweet business and the graviton lance are kind of cool, but they are not enough to save the otherwise lame selection you're given. Speaking of which, there is no sign of the Galahorn other than a passing mention of it just to hit you in the nostalgia glands. I get it, the gun was so overpowered that if you didn't have it, you didn't matter. But still, the rocket launchers you give us to replace it suck ass. Next, <sighs> we have the expansions. Now I get it, I really do. The way to make money for Activision is with a $60 game loaded down with as many add-ons as you can supply. Sure, you can offer a season pass, but when that pass only covers two of the planned four add-ons, somebody in your logistics department needs to get fired. Destiny 2 is saved on this a tad, as the DLC so far have had enough added on content to somewhat justify the price, as opposed to Destiny 1's House of Wolves DLC. But in order to enjoy the game for a half a year, you had to sink a hundred bucks into it. No. No, why Bungie, why? Why the f would you make a DLC that costs almost as much as the game itself. Did the Taken King teach you nothing? <sighs> when the Taken King was announced for Destiny 1, I was excited because of how disappointed the House of Wolves was. Then I saw that it cost 40 bucks and me and a great majority of other day one players gave up on Destiny. Now history repeats itself, but a lot of people have already lost interest in the game. So much so that making the official price tag for the full Destiny 2 experience $150 is going to keep them from buying back in. I'll give it a try for sure, but I already know what's going to happen. Along with the DLC, they will release a Game of the Year style edition that will bundle everything together for much less than $150. And this will officially piss off all of the Day 1 players yet again. Other than a few items of customizable swag, there will be nothing left that will have been unique to the original players of the game that made it a success, and it will have been completely pointless to get the game when it came out. Franchise history speaks for itself. Unless major changes are made between now and the release of the Forsaken DLC, Destiny will once again be catering to the noobs and pissing off the veterans. Unless they finally add in the ability to pilot our ships. That would be awesome. Get on it, Bungie. 